Cool. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, this is Lucina from Vault Cooperative. And here are some upcoming events. Um, Ed from Packet, let us know about the Lenaro Connect in Bangkok, Thailand. And that's the first week of April. Looks like that'll be around CI systems and scheduling. So there's a link to that event. Also, the first week of April is the Open Networking Summit North America 2019. And we've got a couple of CNF testbed events on the calendar. On Wednesday of next week, there's the tutorial on the CNF testbed driving telco performance with the Cloud Native Network Function testbed. And also next Wednesday, we'll be um, presenting the, how to set up the CNF testbed, which is reproducible following the steps. The end of May is KubeCon Cloud Native Con Europe and Barcelona. There'll be a CNCFCI intro and deep dive two sessions. There will also be one 85 minute session on the CNF testbed birds of a feather. And uh, in the meeting notes, there are links to those events to add them to your calendar. KubeCon Cloud Native Con China will be in Shanghai in the end of June this year. Are there any other um, events that anyone would like to share with the group? All right, sounds good. So next on the agenda, and feel free to add any agenda items if you'd like, um, I'd like to give a status update on the CNCFCI dashboard. You can take a look at the v20.1 and v21.0 releases, as well as what's in progress and what's next. And then HH will talk about API Snoop and the Prow automation. Since our last call at the end of February, the CNCFCI dashboard has released two releases, V200 and V210. 201 was released on Monday, March 4th, and we included the new UI and the new test environment section for Kubernetes stable release, as well as the new test column for the end-to-end -end test stage for projects. Visualization of the test environment is what you see at the top of the screen. We've moved Kubernetes into the test environment where um, it is running the stable release on bare metal packet. In future iterations, we will have a drop down so that you can toggle between different Kubernetes and test environments. The new test column has been added after deploy. And that one will show the status of the project's end-to-end -end tests. Right now, you'll notice they're all NA, as the E to E tests are um, inactive at this time. So it's part of our goal in increasing collaboration on the CNCF-CI dashboard with the CNCF project maintainers to um, meet with those contributors and start building those end-to-end -end tests. We also switched the location of the build column and the release column in the new UI. And then on March 21st, last week, we released V210. And at a high level, we updated how to update project details. So that's the first step in starting the um, increased collaboration with CNCF project maintainers so that we can add more CNCF projects to the dashboard faster. So the first step was to update the project details and that is what we see in the project details column here. So it's the logo, it is the display name, the subtitle, and then this is also a button. Clicking on that button goes to the CNCF projects GitHub repo. We also created a contributing guide with steps on how to update those project details. And we resolved the last updated counter that was showing um, null unexpectedly. So now it is working as expected. So the link to the contributing guide 
is included in the slide deck. There, it will be incrementally updated as we add the steps for each column, essentially. So we've gone through the first step of the project column, how to add and modify those details. The next step will be the release column. And then we'll work on the external um, integrations with the CI systems for the builds and the deploys and the end-to-end -end tests. Here's our bug, what that looked like last updated, no. And now it shows 12 hours ago or the correct time since the 3 a.m. Eastern refresh of the CNCFCI dashboard. We've got several um, items in progress as well. The first one is that drop down that I mentioned earlier. We currently see on CNCFCI the Kubernetes stable version only. And we are working on that test environment drop down so that you can toggle between stable or head for Kubernetes. And this is a building block to adding ARM support. So adding ARM support. Um, our goal is to add ARM support to Kubernetes and CNCF projects on the dashboard. After we get the Kubernetes stable and head test environments, also working on ARM, in addition to the current machine, the Intel machine, we will add ARM support to Core DNS. And so this is the, um, the design mock for adding ARM support to Kubernetes in the first iteration. We did receive an enhancement request and we have that in our design phase now to um, iterate on that idea. So we're going to uh, move forward with this original design and then we can iterate and enhance it in a future sprint. Yes. <laughs> created a ticket for updating the Kubernetes stables from V113 to V114. That will most likely be post ONS, uh, but I will open that up for at the end with the Q&A section. So what's next is to add ARM support to Core DNS, and this is what we anticipate it will look like um, in a perfect world. The Kubernetes head environment on ARM will be provisioned to bare metal packet. The provisioning phase will be a success, and then Core DNS will build its latest release 1.9.0 onto the ARM machine, and that build will be a success for both stable and head, and then uh, those build artifacts will be deployed onto the provision packet machine and that will all be successful. So that's what we hope to achieve um, and that will be next right after we uh, update the dropdown and then add ARM support as well to the Kubernetes stable in head. To practice changing project details, we have ticket 77 where we'll be updating the logos on CNCFCI. We'll be replacing all of the project logo icons and the CNCF logo with SVG versions. And I'll follow my, uh, we'll follow our documentation and um, improve it in case any steps were, in case any steps uh, need to be updated in that contributing guide. Then we will work on changing where the, pro where the release details are updated. That is stable release name, the head release commit. And then after that, the build column, changing the integrations with the external systems to retrieve the build details, and the deploy column. We also plan to do some updates, some maintenance. Um, we've got some styling updates to resolve some visual bugs and plan out the, some enhancement requests. And then we'd like to do quarterly software updates, so we'll take a look at our Vue.js app and Ruby. The roadmap can be found um, cross cloud CI, cross cloud CI, roadmap markdown file. In this month, we'll continue adding ARM support to Kubernetes and Core DNS on CNCF CI. Next month, uh, we'll continue adding ARM support to additional graduated CNCFCI projects. We'll update the ONAP stable and head release. Kubernetes to 1.14.0. Also, uh, we'll change how the release details are added 
to CNCFCI, add support for those external integrations and write up the documentation. And skipping ahead in May uh, at the KubeCon Europe, we plan to do an intro and a deep dive and the deep dive session will be how to add a project on CNCFCI. So we'll be working on those steps incrementally to um, have all of the steps ready as well as the contributing guide up to date. And upcoming events, ONS, the driving telco performance tutorial and validating performance in a reproducible test bed next week. And then next month, the CNCFCI intro deep dive and the CNF test bed boss intro and deep dive. Next slide. So we welcome your feedback and your enhancement requests and um, any questions that you may have. Feel free to add any issues to the CrossCloud CI, CI dashboard issues. Um, if you haven't already joined our Slack channel, please join the cncf.slack.io, the cncf-ci channel. You can also join the mailing list at cncfci public, and these calls are monthly on the fourth Tuesdays. We just today changed our Twitter handle to CNCFCI from CrossCloudCI, and we have yet to change our GitHub handle. <laughs> Coming soon. Uh, so any questions on the previous two releases since our last call in February? Well, thank you so much. I will reshare the agenda and notes and HH, are you ready? And would you like to screen share with your update? Thanks, Lucina. Um, well, I usually say, okay, I will wait a minute for the screen share. We have a lot of projects within the CNCF, and one of the things when we started the CNCF GI working group was to try to find some ways to um, help with the CI. And uh, in working with our own project um, with API Snoop, we've been um, needing our own deployments um, as we were, we were going along. And I thought it might be useful to share some of our approach just to get some feedback and thoughts from the greater CI working group. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen and hopefully this is super easy and works wonderfully. I'm going to click share screen now. Can you see anything? Uh, hello? Only seeing a blank screen, Chris. Yeah, that's the same thing I have as a blank screen. Um, is there anything that I can do to change anything? Unfortunately, no. So um, I can see the menus as they pop up. Yeah, me that's too. All. The menu, I had a, and that's it. I have a, the screen I was going to share for me has also gone black, even though I have multiple uh, windows. Um, let me try again next time. I'm sorry for that. Um, I don't want to take up your time um, when I can't present. And I also, um, because I can't see, I can't unshare. Oh, uh, wait, this, this might work. Let's try this. Very top of the screen should be able to. I'm going to click. Very top here. Um, yeah, I like, like the top middle area. Uh, leave and rejoin. Um, 
and then the, hopefully it will remove my sharing. Can somebody claim host or, or remove me from the? Click here. Can I do anything? I can mute. Nope. And I'm going to exit. Uh, so I'll leave the meeting and I'll try to come back. Taylor, would you like to um, move to your updates and then we can try again with HH when he gets back? Yeah, that sounds um, fine. I don't know if there's something I can share for him, but if possible, I can help with that as well. So I was going to give an update on the CNF test bed. I'm actually on the same doc, so I don't have anything in the slides, but they, I can open the repo. So they, for folks who don't know, uh, CNF testbed, trying to create a fully reproducible um, environment for testing network functions on OpenSAC, Kubernetes, um, doing various use cases. Um, most of them have been performance focused and there, there will be others um, testing different things, functionality, resiliency, whatever, but most of those have been performance right now. And we're testing on packet as a primary area. And there's also some collaboration with FDIO CSIT testing lab, where um, part of the test cases are being replicated there on the Linux Foundation uh, systems. So on Packet, uh, we create the machines, um, provision the, the resources from scratch, bring them up, and those have been primarily Mellanox uh, network card-based systems. And we've been able to do that for Docker, KVM, Kubernetes, um, and OpenStack. And the, the big update that's um, happened has been just bring up this on the OpenStack side. So we've been adding support for Ubuntu 18. This will be one of the biggest ones, getting it in parity with um, the Kubernetes side. So using Kubernetes as a host. Um, and this is bringing everything up to date uh, across the board for OpenStack. It's already using uh, latest version of, of OpenStack for the host. Um, these systems are using the vSwitch for OpenStack can be swappable. So it's by default, you're going to use OVS in Open, OpenStack for doing the switching and networking. For doing the high performance, we're using an FDIO um, project called VPP. And that allows us to do high performance network connectivity, um, access to the the cards, the, the NICs themselves, and we're able to do the same type of connectivity on both OpenStack and Kubernetes so that we're doing comparisons. In the OpenStack side, you're using Neutron, if you're familiar with that, for all the networking. And then on the uh, Kubernetes side, we keep the same flat layer three network connection and then add additional interfaces. And right now those network interfaces in Kubernetes are manually stitched together. We're looking at adding NSM support, which is tied into this next item. But on the OpenSec side, some of the items that we wanted to get to was supporting an additional type of system that's coming up on packet. So the Intel, um, Network cards, they're, they don't require additional drivers like the Mellanox that don't, they're proprietary drivers on the Mellanox next. There are public systems, you can get them now, 
but the Intels don't require any additional drivers. They're built in with the Linux, uh, also another Linux Sunish project, DBDK, and you can use that out of the box. So we've been um, working to add support for the installation of the OpenStack VPP that we have, the deployment, and to add, update it to Ubuntu 18.04, and that's happened at this point. We have Intel support now on that, so you can actually select to use whether it's an Intel system or the Mellanox-based system. The Intel systems are not yet released. They're, they were announced at Mobile World Congress last month, and they should be coming out. Um, well, they actually came out, but they don't have enough systems provision for the public yet. But those N2, that'll be an N2 extra large, and they have Intels. And what this means is anyone can go and take the, the code in the CNF testbed um, currently, it's in the tools area, and you can deploy an OpenSAC cluster, and you can decide whether that's OVS or you can do EVPP. Either way, you are going to be able to configure your network for whatever test case you want using standard Neutron configuration, um, and you can do that on, on the publicly available machines. And then on the Kubernetes side, you can deploy a cluster also on the same machine, the Mellanox and the Intel um, systems, and then uh, run any of the same sort of test. So the other item would be moving towards how do you how how do we configure the network connections that you're going to run CNFs on for uh, Kubernetes? So at some point, we may be doing some test cases and um, configurations to show Multis and other CNI plugins. Um, right now, those are stitched together using Ansible and some other items that we configure the uh, CNFs at deploy time, we use Helm charts and the interfaces show up in the host system. Going forward, we're looking at using something like a network service mesh in addition to exploring CNI plugins. So to get to that, there's some items that we needed to look at. Um, pod based, a pod based vSwitch. So the vSwitch, which is OVS and, and the OpenSec world, you can, there is actually an OVS CNI plugin, but we're looking at VPP for that high performance. So we've been working on moving the vSwitch into a pod so that we can have it more in alignment with how you would use it with something like NSM, as well as um, being more cloud native in general with how this is deployed. And then looking at, um, it would be kind of a closer match to the VPP Neutron on the OpenSAC. So that's what this ticket's about. And we, at this point, we have it uh, working for the most test cases. We're doing some final tests on some hardware with more cores so that we can have um, more um, CNS running at the same time. And at that point, this would be done and we'll be you'll deploy the vSwitch using a Helm chart uh, to an existing Kubernetes cluster, at which point you can use that vSwitch and the way that we're using it or potentially other ways. We'll be talking with FDIO and um, the VPP group about potentially having a container that's one of the items that we want to do from here is having that as a public container that could be useful for other people um to use in in different deployments on top of kubernetes and so that's something that we're thinking that'll come out of this beyond just the test case here the other related item is uh, unprivileged cns so for performance reasons and other considerations on kubernetes uh, such as pinning specific cores to containers and for uh, performance reasons. We've 
have a lot of the test cases we're running in with privileged containers. And so we've been um, working towards having uh, privileged and unprivileged containers because those are different use cases you could see in the real world. And that's another item that we have in progress right now. And it's related to uh, NSM. Once we have both of these from a functional standpoint fully in place, then we'll be looking at um, a, t a use case within a sim managing uh, the connectivity between the containers and talking um, to each uh, connecting between nodes and connecting the containers on the same node. And I think that's it as far as the current stuff. Potential new item, which would love to get some feedback on, is about additional use cases. And one in particular, we're looking at SRV use cases and working with some of the folks that are on the network service mesh and other groups um, that are interested. And we, the SRV is a, a way to do acceleration in the VM world. It's been used a lot in KVM. There's places you could use it in OpenStack. And it's very a common thing with telcos. So what we're looking at is what are some real world use cases that are using SRV and other type of performance use cases that we can take and re-implement in the test bed so that other people can rerun these things and share and understand them. And then take that and then implement a cloud native version that would be um, following the methodologies we would expect on Kubernetes. So that's a goal, and this one's just getting going. We've had a um, use case calls going for a few weeks on different things, and this one kind of popped out as something we should focus on. So if folks are interested in this, love to get feedback, and yep, that's it. Any questions? Are we pursuing anything with ARM for the um, for any of the testbed work? Have we heard of anything? Yeah. Nothing right now as far as implementing. Um, it's definitely been mentioned as as far as it's in use with some people, but if there's any specific use cases on ARM, most of the use cases we're looking at would be on Intel CPUs, um, not even AMD CPUs. We've intentionally avoided the uh, packet AMD machines. And a lot of that has to do with specific performance tuning that a lot of the folks involved know about that's available on the Intel machines. So I think if we were looking at ARM, then we would want a specific use case that makes sense on ARM. Definitely something that would be um, available. It's, there's a lot of ARM machines that are out there on packet if we can find a use case that matches. Uh, Taylor, this is Dims. A uh, quick question on the ARM. Are we talking about all ARM nodes and the master on x86, or is it the master also on uh, ARM? Well, the, for the CNF test bed, and uh, there's no current ARM um, support or there's nothing being deployed right now on ARM. Okay, thank you. If, um, if there was a, a use case where we wanted it, then 
you know, we could run Kubernetes on ARM and then it would be finding a CNS that made sense that could also run on ARM. Okay, so the ARM stuff is just for the uh, CNC of CI at this point. Yeah, so that so the CNCSCI project is currently implementing ARM um, and the Kubernetes cluster, the entire cluster is running on ARM. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, there's no other questions. Um, Hippie Hacker, are you wanting to try again? That would be great. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to give you a URL that is uh, going to be updating while I'm typing. This is our, our presentation side. Um, please open that locally in your browser if you're interested in following me along. Is, is that the teammate URL? It is. It is. I'm going to be typing in a. In Would the, you like the, me to share that screen? I think not, because what I'm going to be doing is uh, there's a lot of links that I click on, and I'm going to share via Zoom. So bring up the web URL I just shared and the Zoom sharing side by side. So the right the, you know, on your right hand side you might have the web browser, on the left hand side you might have this URL um, or the Zoom sharing on the right, and the, the web URL I gave you on the left. I'm going okay. to attempt to share my um, the single browser session. Um, really quick. Let's see if this works. Um, Chromium browser. Let's try it. Did that work? No, it blacked out my, my browser. Hmm. All right, let me just um I'm happy to share those as you drop the links. Okay, let's try that. It'll be a, a little different. Um if you go ahead and share that uh, share the URL as we go then. Um I'm gonna start off with uh, just a quick overview and then go into the mirroring and the pipelines and how those go into environments and then go into our um, cluster overview of how things are connected via, uh, um, via the, the jobs and down at the namespace center pods and also um, digging directly into a particular deployment um, and probably not getting all the way to debugging the build, but just uh, kind of give you a taste of what, what we're up to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, focus on the overview for a minute. The software we're doing um, has some back end and front end and it all needs to be glued together and we looked at Netlify and a few other CI things that didn't provide the flexibility in deploying a complex um, app. Um, and we want something as simple as this. Um, when somebody creates a PR, we wait for the CNC FCI, and that's just a bot um, that's responding uh, and saying, hey, here's the results, um, the pipeline, and the, the URL. And so I'm going to do that really quick as a TLDR so we can see how far we'd like to, to take this. Um, I think what I might do is have you share, uh, I'll, I'll start a, um, a new PR on, um, on our branch. So I'm going in, um, I'll drop a link to this real quick. I'm going on TIX121 and I'm going to create a new PR. And I'm going to drop the PR in the channel real quick once I do it. And it's just a demo or demo um, PR for uh, CNCF CI working group. And I'm going to create a pull request. Now I'm going to drop that PR into our channel for everyone. I just created that one. And there's some fun things around the automation. This is including some of the things that the Kubernetes community is using, including Prowl. Um, so automatically on that uh, job, the moments after I create it, um, the CNCF CI bot is going, um, you don't have a release note block. We've got a process around that. Welcome to the community. If I was first committing to this repo, it would say, welcome. Thank you for your first commit. That was delightful. Um, here's some of the other things that you might need to know. 
It also um, added a note around the release note, like I said there, and we have some automation around uh, who within this repo should we contact and apply um, uh, to an approver and a, and a, and a reviewer. Um, I won't go into the specifics of that. I think it's a whole other um, CI working group meeting, but um, the, all of these tooling developed by the uh, Kubernetes community, particularly SIG testing, which we spent a lot of time with, I think has a, a great um, benefit to the broader use of the CNCF and the CI working group community. Um, the last thing that did here, uh, as far as the CNCF CI bot, was um, add a size. So it says this is a fairly large change. Um, we were using um, all these all these failed pieces are part of Netlify. Our application has a, a back end and a front end, so deploying to static content via Netlify wasn't quite going to work. We're exploring some options to remove that, um, but in the interim, we went ahead and added our um, uh, this this other approach using uh, using GitLab. So you can see at the bottom, if we were to have all these go, we have a past uh, CI pipeline. And I'll click on that to give us the details on the pipeline itself. You can see that we had a build and then we have a review, but we're, it hasn't got to this next step yet because we're still in review phase. If I click on the review, um, oh, sorry, you're not following me. <laughs> so click on the, the details next to the, the pipeline there on the, on the right, the bottom. There's a, the, the green checkbox, the only green one, yep. And then the review in the middle, if you'll click on that. And at the bottom, there's a URL that says URL there, and it says HTTP API Snoop CI. It's up. Yep, that's the one. You'll have to copy that for a moment, and I'll, we'll kind of show another flow with that later. And this new branch has a, an ability to filter stuff. We won't go into actually doing this because this isn't an API Snoop thing. This is a, a CI thing. So I'm going to go through our, our shared presentation window here and say, um, we created a PR, we waited for CNCF, and we got a deployment URL. This is the TLDR. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close that and uh, back out to our larger overview and dig into this just a little bit. Um, on my, if I click on these on my side, um, they'll open up into a, a URL. Um, let me think of a way I can publish this quick, but this goes through to the settings for the mirroring. This may be a bit quicker, but we don't go to the URLs. I'll just talk about it. Um, we do some mirroring for each commit. There's a set of branches and pipelines and jobs that flow through, and that ends up being a specific um, environment and review branch. Um, and those links will follow that there when I when I publish it later. For a specific commit, we're actually on that specific commit right now. Um, so if you'll, uh, Taylor, if you'll go back to the uh, to the pipeline that you had up, um, just to kind of follow through. There's a commit over there. If you'll click on the commit itself, yep, on the commit. Um, this is where you can see the parts of the pipeline. And that's the, the commit to the pipeline and the build and deploy jobs are those two jobs. Um, if you'll mouse over the first and second uh, via stages that there, it says it built it and it passed it. If you click on the build real quick, we'll just take a look. Um, see, these are the, the, the jobs that this is the specific example. And underneath that build job, um, you'll see the, the Docker container getting built and pushed to a registry. If you go over to the registry on the left hand side, um, there's a, a mouse over it underneath CI CD. Yep. There will be um, a specific um, registry pushed for this ticket. And if you'll um, kind of click on the chevron to the left of the uh, FIX 121, a little lower, yep, that one. Or maybe the chevron is a little le 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 greater than symbol. There you go. And you can see the, the different um, containers that we pushed. Uh, while we've been doing these different releases. Now the next thing is to, um, uh, you're not logged in so you can't see these things. We actually have some environments and, and you can get to a console on these. Um, I can quickly add you or um, yeah, maybe we, we won't go through that this, but that's the, the pipelines and set up. So I'm gonna close that out. Is there any questions before I go any further? All right, um, so I'll go through um, what's happening within Kubernetes. Now, most of this is going to happen inside our little shared window area in the browser where I'm having my um, the teammate session. So I'm going to focus on the Kubernetes area. And we can see that uh, there are some namespaces on here. So if I um, run kubectl get namespaces there, you can see the, uh, 
We have API Snoop CI set up a day ago, and we have all the rest of the cluster um, up a while back. And so that's the different namespaces we have. Namespace GitLab managed app is where all of our the GitLab managed stuff goes, and the C API Snoop CI namespace is where our deployments and um, reviews go. Inside the GitLab apps managed apps namespace, we have a bunch of containers, and we'll go look at these real quick. There's a, a cert manager and an ingress and Prometheus and the runner, which does the jobs and the tiller, which is part of Helm uh, to deploy the applications. And in the, uh, the namespace itself, there's a, um, we can inspect it further um, by getting all of our uh, descriptions. So you can see it's got some pods some services and specifically an external IP. So we do a, a star DNS entry uh, for all of um, anything dot api snoop dot cncf dot ci and that's where that traffic gets redirected to this particular ingress controller uh, which uses cert manager and other things to create our ssl certs um, and i'll go ahead and close this part out which is the gitlab managed apps namespace and inside our own namespace um, within the api snoop ci we have our um, different uh, production, review, and staging deployments, and the replica sets that are, that are, that are there. Um, quickly to get down to inside of our pods, um, this is the set of pods that we have. Um, there's now a few more running, including the ticket that we have there, and uh, I won't go through the details on that pod for, for time. So if we widen out our view to go to the next step about digging into a deployment, um, these are the URLs. You might be able to click on these in your in your browser. I'm unsure, um, but I think you'll you'll need to have a permission. So this is based on if you have uh, right access to the repo uh, to that particular branch. And so I need to do a little bit on on figuring how to open that up. Um, but within this, um, on um, we can get a terminal and also get in and uh, see the artifacts for that. And underneath here, um, this maps our deployments and our deployments to a pod. And since we have a particular pod, we can start executing commands on that node. So this is just a kubectl command that looks inside the namespace for our CI stuff and goes inside the particular review deployment pod for that. And we're looking to see the process data. Um, and we'll add just to update this to um, just to not sort it so you can see if this is, this is live. Um, those are the API Snoop JSONs that get downloaded and processed, and we needed to find a way to combine the um, uh, generating and processing of the data into our app, which is one of the main reasons we kind of needed some type of flow that, that actually deployed something that we could take a look at uh, per commit without everybody having to do something, something fancy. Um, and here's the details for uh, that particular pod, uh, if we wanted to go into that. Um, the last thing is this um, exec shell, and this will actually give us a shell um, uh, into that node. So I'll simply um, execute that. And I think our other command was uh, CD to where the data is. And now we can see um, we're inside that production uh, or this, this review ticket node. Um, I think that's it for now. I just want to get a quick, quick overview of, of the details of what we're, we're doing and get some, uh, get some initial feedback. I think it might be useful for um, um, other CI, other CNCF projects that are looking to um, have some, if, if they have a, a product that needs to be looked at via the, uh, the web, so that they can have commits that come in and do a deployment. I think it's um, separately, this is just one little aspect, like what GitLab does. I'm, I'm actually really interested in seeing Prow and uh, some type of CNCF CI type bot um, interacting with our community in the way that the uh, in the way the, the extreme success that's being used in the Kubernetes um, community. If you want to try this out, go ahead and submit a PR against API Snoop, and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how we can automatically get that uh, connected to the so you can get to the URLs. I'd love to try about that. That's all I have. Thanks, Chris. Neat stuff.
Thanks. Uh, today I was notified of another upcoming event. The FDIO Mini Summit will be a co-located event at KubeCon Cloud NativeCon Europe. The CFPs are open and close next Friday, April 5th. And the link is here in the notes. So the next CI working group meeting will be on Tuesday, April 23rd. Please um, subscribe to the CNCF CI public mailing list. I'll drop the link here in the chat. And if you're on Slack, please join the CNCF CI channel on Slack. Are there any additional feedback, suggestions, questions, comments? Sounds great. Thanks everyone to, for joining this month's CNCF to CI working group call. We will meet again the fourth Tuesday of April. Thanks. Cheers. Bye everybody.